Chapter 24, The Rescue. Daniel heard the screams for help on a Monday morning. He followed the noise up and around and found a corridor half caved in, blocked by fallen chunks of roof and wall. The muffled ring of shattering glass spilled from a warped, twisted door near the blockage. The screams grew louder, more desperate. Daniel ran to the door and tried to open it, but it was bent and jammed. He kicked at the handle again and again until the last door burst open, revealing a palace made entirely of glass. It was beautiful. It was delicate and shimmering. And it was falling apart. Everywhere the glass was marked by crawling, inching cracks. The sound of glass popping and shattering was all around. As Daniel followed the screams, long shards fell inches from him, exploding on the floor in countless sparkling fragments. He pressed onward, dodging and weaving until he ducked under a doorway, entering a grand dining room. His heart almost stopped. Anja was lying over a glass table. Her eyes were shut. A pool of black liquid, like ink, had formed around her and was dripping from the table to the floor. Stuck deep in her shoulder was a glass blade as long as Daniel's arm. Anja, Anja, I'm here. It's Daniel. Can you hear me? She didn't move, didn't acknowledge him in any way. Daniel struggled to drape her over his shoulder. Then he began to pull away, her limp feet dragging on the floor as the dining room crashed down around them. Out into the main hall and he gathered pace, but white hot pain flashed in his foot and he dropped to the ground, Anja landing awkwardly on top of him. Daniel knew his foot was bleeding. He could feel the hot blood pouring from the wound. He also knew that if he didn't get Anja out, they'd both be stuck many times over with razor sharp glass. As the shattering roar became unbearable, he struggled up and dragged Anja through the door, jamming it shut behind. Help! Somebody help! Daniel? Vindicta Sharp sped towards them, blue eyes almost glowing in the dim light. Mr Sharp, you've got to help her. Oh, she can't die. Please don't let her die. Sharp brushed Daniel aside, crouched low over Anja. He felt her throat. She's alive. Daniel slumped to the floor in relief. Sharp pulled the glass shard from Anja's shoulder and a jet of black spurted high into the air. Then Sharp's eyes closed and he muttered under his breath, his fingers tracing the outline of the deep gash. The pouring liquid slowed and then it stopped. Torn skin began to knit together until nothing remained but the thinnest of scars. Sharp turned his attention to Daniel. This will hurt. Close your eyes. Daniel sat by the fire, sipping hot tea to steady his nerves as he waited for Sharp to return. When the big man swept through the curtain from the labyrinth of corridors, Daniel leapt up. What happened? Will Angie be okay? Sharp removed his coat, hung it near the door and took a silver flask from the pocket, swallowing a, swallowing a mouthful of the liquid inside. She should recover. But even then, there's every chance she'll catch the sickness that's spreading through the staff. Without Lucian, they are rotting away, just like the Emporium. It's not blood inside them, it's ink. Daniel pushed his palm against the cool glass of the window. Hot tears gathered in his eyes. Why was it that everything he loved, or cared about, or depended on, went away in the end? What was wrong with him? Sharp said, I don't believe there's much time left. His big hands were pressed together like he was praying. We need to find Lucian. Now. Daniel shook his head. I've been thinking. Mr Silver has always done what's best for this place. Why would he stop now? If I'm right and he doesn't want to be found, then there must be a reason. I trust him. Do you trust him enough to die here if you're wrong? Said Sharp. Look, Lucian is ill. You said so yourself. He might not be thinking clearly. He might have gone mad for all we know. If we don't find him, I promise you, everything in this shop, including your friends, will be gone. And you're going to have to start thinking about life outside the Emporium again. Daniel stared desperately. I don't want to leave. 
Then help me. How? Sharp let out a deep sigh. Mm. I know Lucian better than anyone. I know how his mind works. Perhaps if I were to study the Book of Wonders, I might find something that you have missed. The tiniest clue can make all the difference. Daniel reached for his pocket. He brought the book out and stared at the battered cover. He was tired and frightened and confused. Could Sharp be right? Was it possible Mr Silver was losing his mind? It is your decision, said Sharp. If you do not wish me to have the book, I understand. And he pointed to the gold watch on his wrist. But time is running out.